All right, guys, welcome back for another video of In Touch with TLR. We're here with my man, Frank Root. And uh, last week, as you know, we showed everybody how to uh, properly build a uh, ball diff like a pro. And today, what are we gonna do, Frank? We're going to break that diff in, uh, set the diff, and then set the sloper. Preparation is everything. All right guys, so today we're gonna break in the new diff that we put in my two wheel, then we're gonna set the diff, and then we're gonna set the slipper. I got the tools out that I need. I have a seven mil nut driver for the slipper. I have a 1.5 wrench. And I'll show you what that's for in a little bit. And then I have a TLR uh, diff adjustment tool. I got a cool uh, Kinwald version. Uh, and then I got my 22 5.0 DC Elite or whatever two wheel drive car that you have ready to hit the track, including especially the rear tires and batteries. You need to have the car powered on. And then my DX6R radio. So first thing, I'm gonna take the car and just kind of get it in my more comfortable working position here. Pull the body off. I'm gonna plug the battery in. I'm gonna uh, power on my transmitter and I just kind of put it there so it's easy for me to see everything. And I'm gonna turn the car on. Uh, so I pre kind of preset the diff a little bit. I mean, you can see it's pretty loose, but it's not spinning for days. So there's some resistance in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, 1.5 driver and I'm going to slide it in this left out drive here so that basically the uh, driver sits against the motor. So it'll lock that out drive. And then I'm going to take the throttle trim on my radio and basically bump it up until that right side tire starts to roll. And I want to get it to where it rolls without any cogging or like jerking. Now what's going to happen is it's going to break in for anywhere from one to three minutes. And basically when I hear the RPM of the motor start to change, that's when I know that basically it's seated in at this tightness and that I need to stop the car, retighten the dip, and then break it in some more. Okay, now we'll check that setting again. So you can see how much looser it is already because it's seated in that little bit. So you take your uh, TLR diff tool here. And I always go straight through the back. And I basically you know, put it halfway in, get into that diff screw, and then I'll turn the right side tire here to adjust. So obviously this way to tighten forward, and I'll kind of feel the setting. It's still pretty loose. I'll tighten it a little bit more before we go break it in again. Let's see. Sometimes it's a little bit of a tight fit. There we go. Pull that out. Okay, you can see we're back to like a little bit tighter of a resistance. So put the wrench in, turn the car back on, and it'll do the same. Sometimes when you tighten the diff, you might have to bump up the throttle trim a little bit more, uh, just, just to get it back uh, to where it's rolling without any resistance or cogging. And then depending on the speed that you have, you might need to tap the brake to get the radio to neutral before it'll start to, to roll forward. So basically I'll do this uh, three, four, five times. I'll kind of sneak up on getting the diff tight. I think it's best to seat the balls and rings in uh, together without too much tension on the diff that can cause indentations on the rings or flat spots on the balls. Okay. So you can see it loosen back up quite a bit again. Now. I'm going to there we go. I'm gonna tighten it quite a bit. And now we're getting to that. It's like half turn range there. And do the same thing again. You can hear how the motor RPM is slower now that the diff is tighter. So basically, once you get the diff tight and then it's pretty well broken in, the RPM won't change after a couple of minutes. It'll just stay the same because there's not a whole lot of seating 
left to do on the bench at least. Let's do Let's see a little tighter. See that's like quarter turn range, it's pretty tight. And this will probably break into about where we want to start. But we'll check it obviously after it breaks in for a minute. See how the motor's barely turning over, so I gotta bump the trim up a little bit with this tighter diff setting. All right, so now we have still a pretty uh, tight setting. I think I'm gonna go just one more, just a little bit tighter and a little bit more break in before I go to set the slipper. Um, and if you set your slipper properly and the diff's loose, you will bark the diff and that will damage the diff and you really want to try and avoid that. Uh, so I'd rather, especially when checking the slipper, be a little on the tight side if I need to be on the diff setting, and then uh, we can always loosen as it breaks in. One thing I'll mention is that it doesn't really matter. Like you don't really need to pin the other out drive and let the left side spin. Like the diff function is working. It's, it's gonna break in the same, in my opinion, regardless of direction. The parts are still rolling. The grooves are still in the same spot in the pin. So I don't really worry about trying to break in both sides. I just, I, I lock this side and really it's breaking in both sides of the diff right now because both of them are spinning. All right, so that's, that's a pretty tight diff setting. So we'll just, Kind of show you here this is how we check the diff we kind of do the the i usually have my left hand on the bottom my right hand on the top and i just kind of give it like a flick and right now it's going about i would call that about three quarter rotation maybe maybe half a little bit more and basically that's like a one rotation we would say is normal three quarter rotation we would say is snug and half rotation we would say is tight Whenever you run your first battery pack on the track, your diff is going to loosen up. It's going to break in more because it's a lot harder on everything than what you're doing on the bench. What you do on the bench helps a lot, but you want to start off the first battery pack of a new diff a little bit tighter than what you would normally run at just to make sure that you don't do any damage to the diff by it breaking in and then being too loose. So this is a good place to start. Uh, so now we're going to uh, go ahead and set the slipper. And I'm gonna make sure you uh, trim the radio back down. It's really important before you turn it on. Uh, so plug it in and turn it on. And then the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take my slipper nut here. I'm gonna back it off probably about two turns. Uh, what I really am looking for is I, I wanna make sure no matter what that the slipper slips first right away. And then we'll tighten the slipper until we get to the right adjustment, but we don't ever want the slipper to be too tight because if the slipper is too tight, we'll bark the diff and then we'll damage the diff. So what you want to do is I can hold this in my hand. Basically, I want to take my radio in my left hand. I'm going to hold my left wrist here on top of this tire. I'm going to take my uh, right palm here inside of my palm and hold the right tire. And I'm basically just going to kind of blip the throttle and see how much resistance there is in the slipper. And what I'm looking for is I want the wheels to pop off the ground about this far. So it's gonna kind of it's gonna kind of fight the motor, the slipper, and it's gonna pull up about this far, is what I'm looking for. So this should be loose and it should slip a lot. You can hear it slipping. So now we're gonna tighten. And I usually tighten like when I know I'm a ways away, I'll do about a half turn, and then when I get close, I go down to like quarter turn. So you can hear the motor being bogged down more that time by the slipper. Even though it didn't lift the tires, it was definitely a tighter setting. So there it's getting tighter. It's not quite lifting the front tires, but it's getting really close. So I'll tighten a little bit more here. So there we're, we're getting to where we're lifting the fronts, but just not quite as much as I'd like. So I'm only gonna do like a quarter turn 
tighter there. To me, that is the perfect place to start for just about all of our indoor clay tracks. So I'm all uh, diff broken in, slipper set, uh, ready to hit the track. Just gonna... All right, Frank, thanks for showing us that. Uh, let's do a recap real quick, kind of just going over everything that you, you showed us in the uh, close-up video. And uh, maybe start with like where the, the wrench goes in the out drive and so forth. Yeah, so the first thing first, when I build my discs, I build them loose. You want them to function. You want the, you know, spin one out drive one way, the other one goes the opposite direction, but not tight. And right. install it in the car, get it all ready to go with tires and a battery and your radio so you can power the system on. Mm -hmm. And then uh, take the, you know, basically the TLR uh, adjustment tool wrench. And if you build your kit according to the manual, it puts a disc screw on the left side of the car, mm -hmm. which doesn't matter at all for function or performance. It won't loosen if it's on the right side. It just makes it easier because it's on the opposite side of the motor plate. It just gives right. you more room. Mm -hmm. So anyways, you just uh, you know slide that in. Uh, the outdrive slot, find the two mil uh, screw head for that diff bolt, and then basically use your uh, right rear tire to turn the nut tighter. Right. And you want to get to a, a starting setting where it's loose, but there's some resistance. Like you get right. a couple rotations, but not mm -hmm. 17. So to tighten it, which way do you want to turn the wheel? The, turn the wheel towards the front so of the car, of like the, the way that it would turn on the track. Got it. Yep. Okay. And to Good lose to on the opposite. Good to know. I always do it backwards. Yeah. And then I go back again, and yeah, and then I go back again, and you know, it's it's a bit of a yeah. mess. <laughs> so I get I get it to where there's some resistance, like maybe two rotations, and then I'll basically take a, a 1.5 or 050 or whatever, and put it in the left outdrive slot and let it sit against the motor. Turn mm -hmm. the car on and bump the trim up until the right rear starts to roll without mm -hmm. any kind of cogging or stuttering. Like you want it to have a gotcha. solid speed to it, but be pretty slow. So gotcha. it's basically can slow you, as can well. Can you go. show me that, Frank, with yeah. your radio? Let's plug this thing in and show everybody. Because a lot of people don't know that you can do this. You know, you'll see people over there holding the radio on and stuff, but there's really a really simple way. And yeah. remember where your trim's at. It should always be at zero for your throttle. But yep. for some reason, if you're at 10 or, or whatnot, you may want to go back and look at that. But Frank's going to show us here, you just bump up the trim so you can hear the motor start to try and work and then it'll kind of maybe work a little unevenly and then bump it up one or two more times till you get a nice consistent right. roll without any issues. Right. Yep. Okay. So we get awesome. So we get it like this, right? And we let the diff break in for one to three minutes. And what I really kind of watch for is I wait till I hear the RPM of the motor increase because when the RPM increases, it's because the resistance decreases because it, right. the diff is seeding in and it's Got loosening. It. So as the parts seat in, as the ball goes into the ring, it makes more room and then the whole diff loosens up. Yep. So then I'll tighten the diff to that two rotations again, do it again, probably about three or four times. Three or four times. Okay. Then I'll tighten the diff to where it gets to like one rotation and I'll do it again. Okay. And then I'll tighten the diff to a half rotation, do it again, and then I'll set the diff to a half rotation. Perfect. And I always start half rotation, first battery pack. I usually don't run my diff that tight, but you want to make sure the first battery pack on the track, you always start tight because it's going to loosen while you run, no matter how yeah. good you break it in on the bench. And if you start at the perfect setting, it's going to be too loose. And if your diff is too loose, you're going to damage it. Yep. Okay. So once we get the diff set, uh, then obviously we'll go ahead and uh, turn this throttle trim down and... <laughs> The next thing we're going to do is set the slipper, and we kind of went through that in detail in the close-up, yep. but you can take your 7 mil wrench, and you're just going to back the nut off till you know right. the slipper's loose. Like, if you put the nut flush with the end of the top shaft, it's mm -hmm. for sure loose. So what happens if your slipper is tighter than your new diff? Yeah, so basically, if you hold the tires on the ground, or you land a jump full throttle or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, and the motor's doing 10,000 RPM, and the tires are doing 0 RPM, then that has to go somewhere. Right. And it's going to slip wherever it's looser. And you yeah. want that to be the slipper and not the diff. Because if yeah. you slip the diff, <laughs> you damage the diff. You're going to build a new diff. <laughs> yeah. So really, it's that's why when we set the slipper, we always make sure that the slipper is on the um, loose side so that we know the slipper is going to slip. And then we right. can tighten up the slipper setting little by little till we know where it's right. And that mm -hmm. way, we know for sure it's not too tight. Exactly. Uh, so just a quick... Uh, show you how we uh, set that slipper again. Now this one we already set, so we we're not going to have to creep up on it. Uh, but basically, you get your car on, and then I hold my radio on my left hand because I'm right right-handed uh, driver, and I'll just hold the uh, my my wrist there on the left tire, and then I'll put 
my right wrist on the right tire and kind of squeeze the throttle. You see how the tires are popping up about the height of the wheel nut here, so like an inch and a half? <laughs> to me, that's just about the perfect diff setting for most yep. clay tracks. If you're on like a super high bite slicks, you might want it looser so your car doesn't wheelie. Yep. Um, if you have a big triple that you got to make, you might want it a little bit tighter little to make tighter. that jump easier. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but that's how you, you check your slipper on a two wheel drive car and it's pretty easy and straightforward. Got it. Yep. Well, thanks Frank. I appreciate it. And, uh, hope that helps everybody out. Uh, if you are watching this and you didn't watch the, uh, diff build that we did last week, make sure you check out Team Losey Racing's Facebook page, uh, Instagram. You can see it in the bios or on our YouTube channel. Um, if you're watching this one and you didn't see the diff build, make sure you go back, watch the diff build because yep. it shows you exactly how to build a diff like a pro. And now you can break in your brand new diff and uh, have even more fun on the track. So thanks, Frank. Appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, we'll, see you, uh, we'll see you guys again. All right. Take care. Bye.